since 1971 when the U.S. leadership decoupled the dollar from its golden chaperone. The intent to exit the highly inflated, faith-based fiat dollar is clear. The U.S. national policy has weaponized the dollar as leverage in international trade. The unfair use of this leverage against trading partners, exporting U.S. inflation by forcing countries to hold depreciating dollars in reserve, the ever-growing national debt, and excessive money printing is just scratching the surface. All the while, central banks around the world are buying gold in record amounts not seen in history. To help make sense of this present economic environment, we will hear from macro analyst and investor Lynn Alden, economist, White House advisor, and author Jim Rickards, and geopolitical analyst Alistair McLeod. I mean, domestic Americans, quite understandably, I mean, you know, we all do this. We think our currency is perfectly safe. We don't, can't see why there's a problem with it and so on and so forth. You know, I mean, surely there's no reason for the foreigners to sell our currency. There's a sort of foreign view and there's a domestic view. And the easiest thing in the world for anyone is to accept their domestic view. So I would urge Americans to just try and look at it from the foreigner's point of view. Look at the dollar from the foreigner's point of view. The world is splitting into two, with uh, Asia as a whole, dominated by Russia and China, both of whom have accumulated very substantial gold reserves. And so have those countries that are aligned with them. I mean, the, the members of the Eurasian uh, Economic Union, for example, the BRICS uh, have been doing that. And even these Eastern European countries, uh, part of the EU, like Hungary and Poland, have been buying gold as well. Uh, so that is one side of it. The other side of it, of course, is the rest of us. NATO, if you like, America, UK, Europe, Australia, New Zealand, Canada. We've been doing absolutely nothing with gold at all. So in a sense, I think that uh, the future, if you like, if you want to look at the really big picture, you've got to look at the future of the Asian continent and their geopolitical strategy and its likely success compared with ours. Different monetary systems inherently incentivize different types of behaviors. And if you're in an environment where the unit of account is constantly debasing, you're enticed to short that, short, short the currency, build anything that's slightly more scarce than the currency, which is not a high bar. The importance of the unit of account that we take as money. The majority of inflation narratives are based around the idea that your savings are being devalued. So as the supply increases, your liquid savings are devalued. But I think in many ways, a equal or bigger problem is that the contracts and the wages of people are constantly being devalued. And so for example, if CPI averages 2.5 or 3% per year over the long run, you know, the realistic basket of things you wanna buy that are not like fully, you know, degraded by technology and things like that. So for example, housing, healthcare, nutritious, like dense food, things like that is probably increasing at four or 5% per year. If you're not getting that wage increase plus whatever your realistic seniority higher productivity bonus is, you're being diluted constantly. You know, the, the PhDs and the central bankers, they would like a uh, fiat money standard because they control it. You can't control gold. I mean, you've got to go dig it up and mine it and it's a costly process and there's always enough gold. It's just a question of price. In other words, there's no central bank in the world that wants a gold standard, but if you had to go to a gold standard to restore confidence, the low end of the implied non-deflationary price range is about $10,000 an ounce. The gold price is going to have to be higher to get the miners to dig up more or if the miners throw in the towel and stop digging it up, the gold price will go higher because of scarcity on the supply side. So either way, it goes higher. Even if central banks don't want a gold standard, you can go on a personal gold standard. You can personally protect your wealth by buying some gold, uh, putting it in safe storage for yourself. You don't have to wait for a central bank gold standard. You can go on a personal gold standard. With a volatile stock market, a bond market that is on track to a historic third consecutive year of losses, and massive deficit spending and government debt that will shackle present and future generations with inflation, it's never been a more important time to protect your retirement savings and purchasing power. Sound money is built with assets that have scarcity, a long track record of trust and value, and cannot be printed by central banks. To learn more about how you can protect your wealth, see the links in the video description to access the free gold investment guides from the best gold investment companies that we have personally researched and vetted. Thank you for watching.